Hey guys, Frank here. Today I'm going to be uh, creating a little video on how to make your interface more immersive, basically, by pretty much removing it. A lot of people actually don't even know that you can edit your interface in Arma 3, because you couldn't do it in Arma 1 or Arma 2, so uh, I'll show you how to do that right now. And how to make it uh, much more immersive for people who like to, especially for people who like to be in first person, like myself. So if you uh, go into, press escape in the game, go to configure, go into game, and then layout, this tab right here, all these these HUD elements can actually be moved around. You can't really delete them or remove them, but you can actually move them off the screen and that helps simulate, uh, you know, no HUD, which is obviously more immersive, because in real life you don't have a HUD that tells you what weapon you have, how much magical ammo you have, and all that kind of shit, so basically I have something like this. I'll show you how to move it around. Basically you hi highlight whatever HUD element you want to move around and then you just drag it off to the screen. I usually put them to the bottom right corner of the map or of the screen. So hint, you don't need to move around but this one specifically will start with this. Uh, the top right here basically tells you the firing mode, uh, what weapon you have, how much uh, current rounds you have and how many magazines you have, what grenade you have selected, uh, zeroing, stuff like that, and a stance indicator. Most of this information is not, if you're, if you're playing first person with track IR, half, more than half that shit is not even needed, because I'll show you right now, if I, uh, basically I'll do this, put it right up there, so that way it still shows your weapon zeroing, still tells you what grenade you have, or throwable item you have selected, how many of them you have left, and what position you are in the vehicle but it does not tell you what weapon you have selected what firing mode you have or how many magazines or rounds left in the barrel or whatever you have or in the magazine I mean uh, I'll, sh I'll show why that is why this is still actually viable without you know completely crippling yourself with minimal hood I also like to move the hint higher up just because also, notifications, you could move this more in the center of the screen you want, if you want, or I like to put it in the bottom bottom left here. This little chat thing, I like to push against the screen on the bottom left more. Squad info stuff, I also move down here as much as possible. To make but The objective of this is to make your HUD elements as far away from the center of the screen as possible without completely removing necessary information. Another thing that is completely useless is uh, well, not completely but almost completely useless especially if you play in first person uh, or may almost only if you play in first person is uh, this top left one here it tells you what vehicle you have which isn't important it tells you what's damaged which uh, you can inspect yourself if you get out of the vehicle and you look at the wheels and you can tell the wheels of uh, MRAP is fucked up then it's pretty obvious uh, you know there's a lot of visual cues to tell you how damaged a vehicle is so that stuff is not technically important even with aircraft, it'll tell you if the instruments are messed up because uh, the, your instruments will be flickering if they are damaged. And if you have a fuel leak, uh, you'll see your fuel gauge going down uh, very quickly. Uh, as well as fuel here, there is there are fuel gauges in um, several of the helicopters. Not all of them. Like the Comanche doesn't have a fuel gauge. Uh, I don't think the Cashman has a fuel gauge either, but I think the rest of them do. So. Those are basically the only vehicles that uh, don't have fuel gauges, aside from armored vehicles, because they don't have an uh, interior. You just have like this magic little screen that you look through. But uh, yeah, I basically dragged this right off the screen completely. Completely useless information. Because it's all... A, for, for, if you're a little bit pilot specifically, you all that information is available to you. Especially if you're in first person, and through the instruments, and just using your eyes to look at the the hull of the aircraft and other shit like that, and and taking note of if you have a fuel leak or not. This stuff right here is basically if there's if you're doing a mission where you may have support elements like artillery, batteries, or close air support, or whatever. These little walkie-talkies basically tell you how many support uh, assets you have. I just move it like right here or kind of keep it centered to the left I move this down a little bit too if you want you can move this out a little bit more that way it's easier to see 
uh, the radio commands or whatever that you're trying to give out to AI. Let's move this right here, that way it doesn't overlap the chat. Because you got the chat window here, so if players are talking or AI is giving out radio commands or a mission message is being typed out here, it'll be right in this little square here. And then to the right of that, if a, if a mission gets, or if an objective or task gets updated, it'll be right here. Just to the right of that. This stuff is not important. Uh, we have the AV camera. That's basically like missions that have. Um, if you pl ever play uh, Strong Harms Cass missions day one, day two, uh, there's that little uh, TV camera thing. You could actually move that around on your screen. So if you want it to be on the left or whatever, I like. I forgot where I put mine. I think I put it in the bottom left. The GPS. I also put in the bottom left. Right, actually, I leave it right about there. Scenario. I don't remember exactly what that does, but I just put it down here. And that. Oh, and all oh, last but not least is the the vehicle radar. I used to play without a vehicle radar. I would just completely drag it off the screen, all the way down there, even more than that. But uh, basically, I was trying to get used to tracking missiles that lock onto me or whatever. Um, trying to look for missile trails and whatever, but because of Arma's engine limitations, it does not give you a good uh, missile trail to track. So it's kind of just like a magic missile just kind of hits you. If it's a nighttime mission, you can kind of track the fire of the, the rocket, but uh, aside from that, it's not very good. So a radar is actually kind of important to have because it'll tell you where the missile is coming from or whatever, or an RPG. So uh, I, I like to put mine somewhere around here. But maybe right. Uh, I, you, you could choose where you put it. I forgot exactly. I think I put mine right here. Usually if I'm a little word pilot, I'm not, I don't have a squad of my own. So the squad information won't actually be there. So that's not too bad of a spot. It's not a, um, obtrusive either. But yeah, so that's how you do it. And then uh, finally, when you're done con moving around your HUD elements and stuff, click OK. It's going to tell you that you need to restart the game for these changes to be applied. So you just click OK. Alright, all that is done. Go back in the editor. Let me save this test. Alright. Restart the game. So it's going to be a black screen for a second. And basically. What I'm going to be showing is um, how we can make this interface work. Why why make these changes and prove that it's not really handicapping yourself, if that makes sense. Basically, uh, the way I check ammunition, it's now that we got rid of that HUD that tells us how, much, uh, how many rounds we have and how many magazines we have, I personally just use look in my inventory, or uh, if you have AGM, which is uh, the authentic ga gameplay modification, um, you could check your ammo that way by pressing Alt R, or just pressing I for inventory. But I'll show you that so that you can understand what I mean better. Hopefully this video is not going to be another 20 minute long video, previewing. I don't have software to edit my videos either, so sorry. Alright, so now you can see in the top left corner of the screen, I'm flipping through my firing modes. You can hear me flipping through the firing modes, but you can't see what firing mode I have for the interface. Why is that? Well, because you don't need to see that. Every weapon that Alma 3 adds has a firing mode selector switch that is animated. So if I look over here, I can tell if I'm on single shot fire, uh, three round burst, or is that two round burst? Yeah, three. And then full auto. And then single shot. So all weapons 
and element three have uh, these firing mode selectors. So that's how I, with track IR anyway, I just look down my weapon and see what firing mode I have, and then keep moving. Because that's more immersive, in my opinion, than looking up at a little HUD. I hate HUDs in uh, games like this. So. so next thing is, uh, you know, you can still toggle through your grenades. You can see in the top right that you can see I'm selecting three different grenade uh, throwable weapons. I have to move the interface over a little bit more to the left so I can see how many I have, possibly, but uh, that's good. I could also zero my weapon. No, don't let me take off the sight. If I press page up and page down, you can see that I am able to zero the weapon still and see what the, zero, what the weapon is zeroed to. Uh, what else? Oh, also. I can't see how many rounds I just expended from my magazine. This is not. You could kind of. Some weapons, I think, like the SMGs, have a see through uh, magazine and you could look that way. But something like this does not. So, how would you check your ammo? Well, I just do this. See this little white bar? That tells you very roughly how many uh, rounds in the magazine are still left. So, it's. In, in my opinion, that's kind of equivalent to uh, Ace saying, you know, the magazine is very light or whatever, because it's just a bar. It doesn't tell you how many rounds are left. It's just a little, very general, vague kind of bar that tells you you're low on ammo, period. And if you're, if you reload, a, uh, AGM tells you how many magazines you have, or how full your magazine is, Jeff roughly, and you can also just press I for inventory. And you got this full bar. It means a uh, full magazine. If I expend like, let's go through uh, three numbers, and then I check the the ammo. You can see it went down a little bit. So that's how I personally check uh, magazines. A lot of people won't like that. A lot of people want their information immediately. But if you go for immersion or whatever, I'd say that that is not too bad of a, a compromise, I guess. Uh, another thing is. Let's see what else we got. I think that's it for the top right. I'm probably gonna miss something, but nothing too uh, crazy. If I get in the helicopter, you can see that the radar is now in the bottom left corner of the screen. I don't like it in the top center because I don't know. It just seems more obtrusive. You can move around the radar wherever you think it's best, but I keep it on the offset to the left because my instruments are usually offset to the bottom right or in the center. Uh, it depends whether I'm flying a Cashman or a, I mean a, a Comanche or a Little Bird. But all these instruments are, well almost all of them, actually work. The ones on the far right mostly don't work. I think only two or three of them actually work. You have, you have a clock, some RPM for the anti-torque I think, and you have a fuel gauge. The rest of them don't work. So that fuel gauge actually works. So let's see if I can. You have a compass and all that. Although the radar also can work as a compass somewhat. 270. So that should be west. Yep. You also have a compass there. I mean, there really is not much of a use for uh, interface. If you look at the top left, you don't see that vehicle info anymore. If you want to know how fast you're going, look at the speed, uh, your airspeed indicator, which is the top left in instrument. You just kind of figure it out like that. If you want to tell, want to know how many, uh, if you want to know your altitude, just look at your altimeter, which is the one to the right of the, uh, uh, let's go, it's cool. To the right of the blue and brown instrument is the altimeter, and it'll tell you what your altitude is. Uh, what else? There's other, other information on the, uh, I know, fuel is there, so there's other information on that top left hug that is also available in the instrument, uh, with just the instruments or just looking around. Like the damage of the helicopter, you can just kind of figure it out on your own. If you start spinning a little bit, that means your anti-torque is fucked up. If your engine goes out, that's pretty obvious. You don't even need to. Exp I don't even need to explain that. But yeah, anyway, I think I'm over-explaining stuff, so I'm just gonna end the video here, and hopefully uh, this helps.
people figure out how they can make uh, Ahmed 3 a little bit more immersive. Or at least try it out, you know? It, it's, it, it is difficult to get used to at first, but I think it, was, it has made the game uh, much more... Uh, much more interesting, in my opinion, for me. So, yeah. Also, before I go, actually, I want to recommend uh, two add-ons. I want to strongly recommend two add-ons that you guys use uh, to improve the immersion. First one is AGM, which is Authentic Gameplay Modification. Basically, adds an interaction menu. It's basically Ace for Arma 3. It's the, it's the closest thing we've got so far. So, if you don't use AGM, or if you've never even heard of it, get it. But don't use. I would. I would personally uh, not recommend using the two medical.pbo files that come with it. Just delete those or move them onto your desktop or something, and you know, leave the rest of the PBOs in the AGM folder because the medical stuff is very, very glitchy. If you get shot once by like a 762 round, it'll say that you have like five body parts damaged and you need to patch up each an individual body part. Which is kind of retarded. So it's because of how Armor 3 handles damage, but yeah. But aside from that, aside from the medical PBO bullshit, uh, you got like this cool interaction menu, which I. Uh, let's see which put the X key. There we go. You can put in earplugs, you can put the weapon on your back, you could do uh, hand signals, shit like that. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that comes with it that I'm not even gonna go over, but uh. AGM is fucking awesome and improves just this game overall. You know, adds wind. If you hold down, if you hold out your uh, compass, you see in the top right corner, it tells you where wind is coming from and the strength of the wind. And it will actually affect uh, your bullets, M203s, artillery, fucking, I think even mid-air rockets and gun runs and shit. It's pretty insane. It's fucking amazing. It affects the smoke, so AGM is pretty much a must. Like, it, yeah, anyway. Aside from that, there's also a uh, Keys mod. Uh, Keys is made by Sakura Chan on the forum on a, or on Amaholic. Just look up Ama 3 Keys mod and uh, basically gets rid of add actions. Like I'm scroll wheeling right now and I'm not getting add actions to switch to my weapon or switch to binoculars or whatever. So if I just go up to the door right here and I just press spacebar, instead of switching to my fucking weapon, it's gonna actually open the door. And uh, you could also let go of the. You know, just press, just by pressing space bar, bar while you're climbing up a ladder, pressing V, it'll uh, let you let go of the, so pressing space bar, and it opens the doors. If I run up to this door and I press space bar, it's going to close it. Yep. Sometimes you don't even have to look at it that much. It's barely. Just extremely fucking useful. The only add actions you really get are like load uh, tracer rounds or place explosive, detonate, detonate explosive, and open doors, getting vehicles, stuff like that. That's about it. The rest of the add actions have keybinds already. Like, you don't need keys. You don't need the keys mod to get the keybinds for all these functions. They're already in the fucking game, in the controls, if you just look. So, but the keys mod gets rid of the needless add actions so that you could just use the uh, keybinds which makes sense to me so anyway I'll put those add-ons in the description and uh, if you need more clarification on how to do this shit then uh, just post in the comments or whatever and I'll do another video or answer you directly in the comments so yeah take these guys